uh, Marie Chantal that uh, some of you or many of you already know. <clears throat> um, I think we met at the University of Johannesburg uh, many years ago when you were a student there. And then there was uh, ASP 2016. Um, Marie Chantal has been uh, doing a lot of things, not just physics, of which uh, she already had a PhD and she's currently a postdoc. Uh, solar energy applications, which are very important for Africa. But as well, as well, I understand that she has been heavily involved in uh, women in science um, and as well as uh, the uh, Rwandan Association for um, um, Women in uh, Science and Engineering. Uh, so a lot of engagement and outreach activities uh, which we need um, in addition to doing the physics so that uh, we can grow um, you know, uh, physics and, and young people are going to physics, uh, young girls and promoting the participation of women in the scientific uh, discourse and engagement and research and, and so forth. So she's really an example of what we would like to see our alumni uh, ASP to be, to be doing. So it's really a pleasure to have here, have her talk to us today. I also want to mention that uh, Marie Chantal is uh, one of the co-conveners of uh, the Women in Science Forums of the African Strategy for Fund Fundamental and uh, Applied Physics, which is uh, what we are working on right now. To The idea is to develop a strategic vision for the entire continent in uh, fundamental physics and, and applied physics and in uh, all of the engagement areas including physics education, young physicists and women in physics, um, engagement with policymakers and so forth. So we are starting that process right now and Marie Chantal is one of the conveners of the Women in Science Forum. I think um, when we talk about women in science, we are talking about the issues facing women in science. So that means uh, uh, all of us should uh, be involved in that process. Um, so if you have not already, already done so, please register yourself uh, to that forum. And we'll be hearing from Marie Chantal uh, about how to organize that and how to move forward. So um, I am really, really happy to have a lot of, uh, you know, young, uh, dynamic, upcoming um, African physicists, uh, men and women. It's just beautiful to see uh, all of the progress. And I would like here to uh, acknowledge is Professor Ferrer, um, who has been, who is, who you are working with currently. Um, it's really a pleasure to have you here. And uh, um, I would like to thank you for all of your supervision and, and training that uh, you are giving to uh, all of these young people of Africa, including Marie Chantal, and, and we can only uh, be proud of that. All right, so on that note, I will let Marie Chantal take over and she can tell us uh, everything about herself and about what she's doing. Thank you, Prof. Ketevi. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And thank you for a good introduction. And I thank you, everyone who is here. As Prof. Ketevi said that I am Chimiana Marishanta. I came from Rwanda. And currently, I am a lecturer at University of Rwanda in Physics Department, a College of Science and Technology. Uh, apart from that, I'm doing research in applied uh, physics. Uh, where I do application of physics in solar energy at uh, Universal Physics, as uh, with Prof. Vela has said. So apart from physics, I also do uh, community engagement activity, which are uh, women STEM uh, outreaches. As you know, uh, women are lagging behind in the STEM field. So we are trying to, to push harder so that women can be involved in physics. Uh, Africa School for Physics. Actually, I am alumni of uh, 2016. So I came to Africa School for Physics in 2016. 
that's where I met all the alumni. And uh, but I met Professor Ketebe, as he said, in usually when I was doing my PhD. In 2016, I was in my second year of my PhD, and now I got the PhD. So in this uh, presentation, I'm going to tell you uh, where I am now and what I have been doing after attending this uh, School of Physics. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about myself, some STEM activities that I have been doing with my colleagues, and then I'm going to tell you uh, an overview of the current projects that we are working in at the moment on on the moment then what is going to be next so i'm going to remove my video because sometimes you know the connectivity is a problem then i can carry on okay so let me talk about a little bit about Rwanda, uh, the geographical location and its temperature, because as I'm doing the research, I'm doing research on solar energy, and we need to know some uh, geographical uh, situation of my country. So Rwanda is located in the uh, center of Africa here and in the Great Lake region of Africa. So as you can see, it is a hilly country and green. You can see here we have, a, this is a tea plantation of my country. So as you can see, we have the altitude between 1,000 and 4,000 meter. The temperature is tropic. The humidity is around 8%. And then the temperature varies between 20 and 30. Uh, the sunshine duration is between 11 and 12 hours per day. So our country is too small. It has only 26, 380 kilometers squared. So it's a very small country, but it is very dense. As you can see, the population is 12 million. So to that, because we are dealing with energy, the access to electricity in my country is only around 60%. And from this one, only 53 have the connectivity to the electricity. The installed capacity of the energy in Rwanda is only 210 megawatts. And only solar contributes to 6%. So that is the situation in general and how my country is. So what is about myself? I'm going to talk a little bit about my study background, then I will continue with the STEM activity. So I started my BS in science in 2003, and then I finished in 2007, where I got my, my, uh, my bachelor with physics, chemistry, and how to teach that in education. Later on, I got an opportunity to go to EMS, which is the um, African Institute for Mathematical Science. So I went there in South Africa, Muizenberg, uh, the cohort 2008. So I got my postgraduate diploma in mathematical science. And that is when I met Professor Fell, because well, uh, when I was doing my essay, the project I was working on was on solar thermal energy system. And this is the project that we are carrying on working till now. In 2009-2011, I started my master's. The project we started at EMS uh, carried on. Uh, we just, it, 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 it regenerated the EMC project. And then we continue with Prof. Fair uh, at the University of West Waterland in Johannesburg. And I did again the, the same project, but with improved uh, 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 technology and uh, some simulation and computation skills which was involved. Then I got my master's in physics in 2011. After getting my master's in physics in 2011, I went back home and then I started teaching in, in the University of Rwanda in the physics department. 
it was a, a shock because I was the first, uh, uh, the only women in that department. But as you know, when you have a master's degree, you have to carry on with also your study. So I got a chance to get a PhD scholarship and then I came back to Johannesburg uh, to do my PhD with Prof Professor Winkler Hartmut, who is on this picture. And I finished my PhD in 2018 and in 2019, in February, I was awarded, uh, this is an award that I got because I was the first female in Rwanda to hold physics uh, degree, a PhD degree in physics. Uh, later on, uh, after, when I was doing my PhD, when I finished, I applied for NLRF, and then I got the scholarship or fellow to do a postdoc which I, I am doing with Prof. Fela on the same project that we were working on in my master's degree. So this project uh, that we started at EMS didn't only uh, uh, carry on with my, my postdoc, he also generated two PhDs. So one is for Dr. Victor and another one is for Dr. Uh, Karet, who are also uh, African young scientists. Thank you for being there for us. So I am very grateful because I couldn't be where I am of, uh, because uh, uh, of a, a lot of organization involved and institution, uh, universities, the government of Rwanda who sponsored my studies. So there's a, the government of Rwanda who spon sponsored my undergraduates and uh, uh, at the University of Rwanda, then Ems who sponsored my postgraduates, then Vets also who sponsored my a master's uh, degree, UJ and OWSD National uh, uh, Science for Development Country, so who supported my PhD. Later on, uh, during my PhD, I got a chance to do international visit and also I attended different conferences and workshops uh, this is, was because of different uh, sponsorship. There was ICTP, uh, I attended 2000, uh, the, uh, the ASP uh, 2016 also, which is, was supported by ICTP. I attended the Women uh, in Physics workshop in Italy. I went to the conference in the UK. All of this because of those uh, organizations. So I didn't put everyone, but those one play a, a big role in my life to reach where I am. And currently, uh, NRAF was supporting my uh, postgraduate uh, studies. So after all of this, being grateful, grateful is something, but also you have to give back to the society. So that's why we created this Association for Women in Science and Engineering, Rwandan Association for Women in Science and Engineering, and the, its abbreviation is RAWISE. So all those uh, uh, organization and institution paid a lot in my life. So what am I doing uh, in a research? Actually, I do the modeling and optimization of solar energy technology to ensure a reliable supply of demand. Because as you know, energy is the source of development. So without energy, we can't do anything. So we have to make sure that the energy which is produced uh, from solar energy source is being uh, optimized and it is also uh, uh, well uh, harnessed. During my PhD project, uh, I worked on a solar radiation modeling and uh, particularly I worked on my country because uh, there was a gap in finding that there wasn't a database where you can find exactly the, the solar radiation data for each part of the, the country. So what we did, uh, we incorporated some atmospheric constituent in uh, solar models using different uh, tools such as Monte Carlo simulation and other, and also a well established software to do some calculation uh, uh, to get uh, the horizontal solar uh, radiation of our country. This is uh, still an ongoing project because they were unfinished job. 
we're still working on that and then some publication are going to come soon. Apart from that, I also uh, currently involved in STEM uh, field where I am looking for gender equality in STEM. So we have two projects with Flowis now. The one is supported by UKR, GCR, and the other one is uh, supported by IDRC. So the one is, is looking for the journey of STEM, uh, for STEM students in an undergraduate. How are they moving from uh, undergraduate to the workplace? Are they dropping once they get outside the, the university? What is happening to them? So we are starting that journey. The other one is on improving the design in a uh, process of housing and public space because we have found that the way the, the house in Rwanda or public space are built, they don't they didn't involve the or they didn't include the gender design for the disabled people and also special, uh, especially for women. So we are also doing that study. And currently on the solar part, I'm working on a heat transfer analysis and numerical simulation of cavity receiver of a parabolic tool solar collector, uh, where a prototype is being built. Actually, it's almost uh, at the end of its uh, construction on the roof of this department, uh, physics department at VITS. So uh, what we are, what, what I'm, uh, the aiming of this is to validate our numerical results. So we are going to produce some numerical results and then the experimental part is going to be uh, validating that one. So uh, during my whole study, as I was telling you, I did some co international collaboration. Uh, so uh, on this picture here, we were at USA I got an opportunity during my postdoc uh, time to go to uh, the US. Uh, I this was sponsored by the US embassy. And this was done through RAWIS actually, because uh, uh, knowing what we are doing in STEM, so they, they give us the, this trip to go to America to find out or to, to learn how American women have done these STEM activities. So, so as you can see on this picture, those women are from 30 countries and uh, from the, all over the world. So here, this is the start of Einstein because we visited only science institution. So this is one of a place that we visited. Then we took this as a memorable picture. We also visit some kids uh, club uh, here, one, this kid was showing me what they have built, uh, what, how, did they, uh, how they use STEM to construct, uh, to do some, uh, to solve some societal pro uh, a problem. Here, I was presenting my, my PhD uh, findings at a, uh, at a UK uh, conference. It is a nine international conference for applied energy. So it took place in UK Cardiff. And this one is showing uh, that we were in a, in ICT P Trieste, where we attended the career uh, uh, workshop for women in physics, and then we established a, a huge collaboration. All those people we are still in connection, and we have some project on, ongoing. Okay, enough about myself. Uh, now I'm going to tell you about some STEM activity which are being done uh, through RAWISE. So RAWIS, as I said, is a Rwandan Association for Women in Science and Engineering. So this association was built because we need to increase the number of girls in STEM, building and educating capable and skilled women in different areas of STEM, in, especially in Rwanda. Then by building uh, these uh, skilled women, or we need also to cultivate an entrepreneurship and a research spirit in them, because we have found that we women, we have this fear of doing research. And sometimes when you do something, you don't, you don't, you don't feel like you own it. So this is a kind of a platform where we help each other to grow and to be visible. 
So this picture was taken when we launched RAWIS together with the OWSD National Chapter. The OWSD National Chapter, the OWSD is an organization for women in science and developing country, which helps uh, to give scholarship to women to pursue their PhD in science in developing countries. So we have also a national chapter and, the, and we host it. RAWIS hosts the OWSD National Chapter. It was in 2018. So what are our objectives? The first objective of RAWIS is to encourage young women to take up studies in science and engineering. So how do we do this? We, we do this by going down, especially in rural area, talk to those young women and then show them that science, how to do science, why can we do science, and we take some role models there to show that science can be done easily uh, through the hands-on activities. So we also provide workshops to develop the career of scientists and engineer females. So as we, I was telling you, the RAWIS is an association for women in science engineering. And uh, those women uh, who are in RAWIS, to be a RAWIS member, you have to hold a master's degree in science or in engineering and above any degree in those fields. So it means that even though you have a master's or you have a PhD, sometimes there are some skills that you don't have. Let's say public speaking, writing skills. There are a lot of soft skills that we need to develop in everyday life. So RAWIS provide those workshops so that we can have the skilled women in STEM. And we also increase and promote females' participation in science and technology profession in Rwanda. What, how do we do this? Uh, the promotion of uh, female participation, we do it through outreaches and mentorship pro program, but also we encourage those who choose to do STEM to stay in them. So those are the kind of things that we do. And then we also celebrate the achievement of women in STEM. If uh, we have, for example, women who do a lot of publication, there are now some program which award them so that people can, can be motivated to do more research. We also do the, uh, the research in STEM related project, uh, like the one I showed you, those two projects, uh, the kind of the, the project that we do, which are related to STEM. So, so far uh, we have uh, reached some milestone. So it, uh, the whistle was created in 2015. Then we did our registration. Now we are uh, known, uh, we are, a registered association. And then in, 2000, uh, and, uh, in 2018, we, it was launched officially. And we also start a, a doing a symposium. So during the symposium, it, uh, the member of RAWIS are sharing the kind of research that they are doing, but also we also give those kind of uh, workshop that I was talking about uh, soft skills. So some of the activity are based on uh, four pillars, the community building, the career development, influencing STEM policy and promote gender research. So when I talk about community building, it means that this is a raising awareness about STEM, going to schools, uh, talk, talking to those young ladies. Uh, also, we do group and one one uh, monitoring because among ourselves also we need mentorship. We just do that also. We want also to create an STEM incubation center where those students who are really, really doing well uh, in the the final years, when they finish, they don't, and then they go outside, they don't have job, they can stay in those incubation center and then develop something from themselves instead of going outside doing, uh, uh, being jobless. So we also do career development, that's what I was saying, uh, soft skills, 
uh, we do influencing STEM policy. So by this, we encourage ladies in STEM who are capable to, to take up those positions in leadership uh, position so that they can go and talk to other policymakers and then they can also advocate for us. Because if they are not there, no one is going to happen what is going on with women. So we also promote gender and research. So this picture was taken on the, in 2020 before COVID. We were celebrating the International Day for Women, in, uh, women and Girls in Science. So what we did here, we, we, we brought uh, some uh, young girls, you can see them here, to Kigali from rural area to come and meet potential professional women in STEM in high position. Uh, we are going to see some met the minister, some met the US embassy. So it was actually a kind of uh, an interaction that uh, to, to show uh, the young women if they work hard where they can reach in the future. So uh, this is uh, one of the activities that we did uh, uh, on uh, in secondary school. Here we went to Nyagatale and here we went to Wujesera, or I think this is for our girls' school. So we, we also collaborate with other association which have uh, uh, the STEM activity in the objective. And then we go all together to talk to, to those uh, students so that we can put all the forces together to really cultivate this culture of uh, STEM in them. So, so far we have visited more than 20 schools and now COVID has uh, stopped us, but I think we are going to reschedule that. And we have different collaboration with these women in science initiatives. And we do also career development workshop like the one I showed you. Uh, for example, we did one with OWSD where different uh, uh, country were presented in Rwanda and Rawis organized it, it was really, really successful. Uh, we have a symposium and we also have to celebrate, though some event has to be celebrated and we also uh, uh, celebrate the achievement of others. So we also responded to COVID-19. So during COVID-19, what we did, we sent out a motivational message to young because during that time, young generation uh, was like, there is no hope to, to go back to school. So we tried to, to calm, them, calm them down by sending them motivational message. Also, we created different group where we, uh, we composed some conceptual question so that they can revise the courses. So this is a picture where, when we went to Nyagatari High School, after a talk, we took a, a group picture. Here, it, it was uh, International Day for Women in Science 2020. And here, it was a symposium uh, where someone was teaching uh, people how to negotiate and how to, to talk in front of people. And on this picture, uh, it is a, a group picture uh, after a celebration of the international girl, uh, women and girl. And in the front of you can see uh, different people. This is a representative of uh, uh, Carnage Emeroni University in Africa. This is the uh, ambassador of USA, the Ministry of Environment and Christina Gassinjizwa. Those two are our advisors. We have uh, uh, Kati who is the far away representative. We have Professor Bonfis. We, I, and everyone is here. So women and men are getting together to support uh, our young girls to take up uh, uh, the STEM field. As you can see, uh, during this kind of uh, meeting or breakfast meeting or conferences, we just, we don't sit in uh, like, let's say, the minister sits together, no, we mix them. We can see on this table, the ambas amb ambassador of USA is sitting with the, the kids so that they can exchange, they can, you know, so that they can get some inspiration in them. And here, this guy is discussing with the minister of environment. So 
uh, you couldn't imagine the, 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 how they were feeling at that time. They couldn't, they were like, oh, I met the US uh, in, in, uh, ambassador. I met the minister. So they were like so excited. So those are the kind of uh, active that we do. We, we, we bring the high level people or the high profile people to those young lady from rural area and then they exchange the experience. So uh, here it was during the symposium, our first symposium and the second one is coming soon in December uh, where they were in negotiation and they were talking about themselves, storytelling, uh, how to present, how to negotiate. As you can see, those two are negotiating and then later on they took a group photo. So this is how we respond to COVID-19. So uh, for example, mathematic group composed the conceptual STEM question. It was a kind of book. So what we did, we, we composed some question. After one week, we sent them the answers. Uh, this was done in all the fields, physics, chemistry, biology, er in every field. But also we were also sending uh, some motivational message. This is one of the motivation uh, message that we were sending to the young generation. Uh, as I was telling you, we also celebrate our ladies who are doing well. Recently, uh, this year, we all those uh, ladies that we can see here uh, are Rawis member. This is Rita, this is Edwish, Dr. Edwish, this is Mrs. Eva. So they, they were awards because of the, the way they are working. She got an award as a rising star in research. She got an award as a research because he has a lot of publication and she got a leadership uh, award in STEM because she's a principal of I, uh, IPRC Tumba, it, but uh, also, but she's really engaged in women, especially in tech women. So this girl is a secondary school teacher. So at Rawis, we have uh, we have created this award to recognize that before all happened, there were people in secondary school. Some ladies in secondary school were teaching us, let's say, mathematics, physics. But sometimes when we are celebrating the achievement, we forget about them. So, uh, so we created what we call a uh, champion of science award to, the, to, the, to celebrate the contribution those uh, uh, secondary teachers had to us. Because without them, we couldn't be where we are. So this is a, one of the achievement that Rawis have now. So we also award, and those three were awarded by the National uh, Science Technology. So uh, on this picture, uh, this girl uh, in 2020, who had been awarded again this champion of science, I think we have done this three times. The first one was uh, awarded to Christina Gasingirwa. The, se the second one was uh, given to this, and then the, the third one was given to the chief. So those are the kind of achievement to celebrate our women achievement, and then sometimes we get awards. So this is in 2019. Uh, also, they were awarded. This is Noella and Alice. Alice got the rising style, and Noella got the research award. And uh, those are our colleague from EMS and uh, from the University of Rwanda. So this is what we have been doing so far. Then I try to summarize those activity uh, in STEM women. And now I think I'm going to go through the research part that we are currently doing. The research part that we are currently doing at WITS, uh, it is on a solar true plant. Uh, which is a, a solar true uh, uh, collector. So uh, I'm going to give you an overview. Uh, I know most of you are not uh, familiar with some terms in this field. So I, I try to put it in a simple way so that you can understand actually what we are doing. So I didn't put any scientific uh, uh, thing in this 
a presentation of my research, which are we are which we are doing now. So uh, to start, I have to tell you that we have a, what we call a concentrated solar power uh, system. And uh, most of the time we know that most of, when we talk about solar energy, everyone, what comes in mind is PV, photovoltaic system. So apart from photovoltaic uh, system, we have also concentrated solar power plants. So the concentrated solar power plants what they do, they concentrate solar light using a mirror or a lens to concentrate a large area of sunlight into a receiver. So we have different type of concentrated uh, solar plant. We have this one, a solar uh, tower. We have a linear Fresner. We have a parabolic true, and we have a, a, a parabolic dish. So our study, concentrates itself on a parabolic true plant. Uh, so uh, as you can see, it has a long uh, parabolic mirror and on the focal length, we put a receiver, a long tube of a receiver. And inside that receiver, there is a fluid. And that fluid is the one which is going to be steamed and eh, to generate the electricity. So what is the background about this uh, a, a parabolic true solar plant corrector? As you can see, as I've said, we have sun rays. They are going to be reflected back by this parabolic uh, mirror. And then the, uh, the reflected uh, rays are going to, uh, to be absorbed by the corrector tube, OK? So that's how, that is the concept. So sometimes we have also a tracking mechanism. So among different type of solar thermal system for collecting solar energy, the parabolic true solar collector is the why we use it is because it can be functional on high temperature. Okay, it varies between four hundred and hundred thousand degrees Celsius. So a parabolic true collector is one of uh, such concentrating collector which has proven to be used usefulness in medium high temperature. As I was telling you, it varies between 400 degrees Celsius and a thousand. So it is simple and feasible when compared to similar type of solar collectors. It has a huge industrial application and it is mainly concerned of high temperature, steam, and electricity. So we use them to create or to generate electricity as well. So why did we choose this project? So uh, in the plan of South Africa is to be, uh, uh, to utilize the renewable energy source uh, to generate 42% of its electricity, meaning that the a renewable energy source is going to be like uh, the source of energy. As you know, the South Africa electricity is mainly from the coal. So they want to switch, to, to, to switch from uh, no renewable to renewable. And we think that by improving already the existing, because uh, this is not like something which is new in South Africa because they are already uh, plant in South Africa. Those are uh, in Sina and uh, I think in Kula, if I remember where the names. So, uh, but we, we, there is always in a, a, a need to improve the efficiency of those uh, plants. So we think that this technology can also be one of the solution to this uh, vision that South Africa is having. So solar energy, as you know, is a clean energy. And if we are in this uh, uh, time, everyone is talking about climate change, climate change, climate change. And we know that if we are using no renewable energy, it is one of the contribution to this climate change. So we, try, we are trying to reduce the emission of uh, greenhouse gases. And this is one of the solution to mitigate that. 
So uh, our system is going to use, I'm going to come to that in the next slide. Uh, we, uh, when I, am do, I was doing my master's degree, uh, my, uh, my master's degree had two parts. It had the, the survey on the renewable energy technology used in my country, but the second part was on the solar tree plants, uh, especially on the receiver part, where we were looking at a comparative study of a selective coating and a hot mirror. So when I'm talking about a hot mirror is a, a, a kind of uh, a coating that you put on the side of the, the, the receiver and it has this capacity of reflecting the infrared while the selective coating that deteriorate on the low temperature of 400 degrees. So I was doing a comparison study to see if we can use both of them on the system or if we can only use it. And then we, the conclusion was to use the, hot, the hybrid system, even though the hot uh, mirror was showing a high efficiency in this system. So the logical extension of this research, because uh, as I told you, this research has generated two PhDs and it is also this part of uh, my postdoc research. We think that uh, there are a lot of things to improve in the receiver unity. So we are going to see now the cavity uh, receiver and then see how we can create a novel cavity receiver, which I'm going to explain in the next slides. So our technology innovation intends to produce cheap electricity because we need a cheap electricity and we need a renewable energy source of electricity, which is uh, uh, environmentally friendly to use uh, if you are using solar energy, which is a renewable energy. So an introduction of a cavity receiver is one of the solution to reduce this and in the same time would help to increase the concentration ration of the system. Because uh, when we are measuring the performance of the system, we always look at the concentration ration. And as I mentioned before, uh, the way this uh, concentrator works, they concentrate the reflected uh, light into the receiver. And then checking on the concentration ration it is like the ration between the incoming solar radiation and the one which is absorbed on. So the high concentration ration means that the system is going to get more uh, solar energy. So another reason that we are doing uh, this project, we need also to reduce uh, the thermal losses. Because uh, before uh, we, use, uh, we, we are used to the uh, evacuated tube. And then when the concentration uh, on the receiver is done, there are going to be some rows because if we don't put, for example, if you see on this figure, uh, we can see that we have, this is uh, the grass cover, okay? And then uh, out on, on the grass cover, we have an insulator, but here we have a, a, an absorber pipe and inside the absorber pipe, we have a heat transfer fluid. But here you can see we have a vacuum, okay? So, if we have a solar radiation coming, passing through this, uh, uh, then they're going to be uh, absorbed here. Sometimes we are going to lose some of them, okay? So instead of losing them, uh, we, it's better to put something here to, to uh, like, for example, like a hot mirror, which has this property of reflecting the infrared so that we can reduce that losses. So the radiation that we're going to lose is going to be captured by a coating that we are going to put, for example, inside here, okay? So this is why we need to reduce the thermal losses, which improves solar electricity conversion. And then once you lose the radiation losses, you are improving uh, this gain on the receiver. So the use of more appropriate and robotic material, because also, this is not a, a new system, but we can always improve 
the material that we are using. If we are manufacturing something, we need to see which material can have a, a, a long life. So our aim is to test economically viability of the innovation that we are installing at WITS. And once, is, uh, what, once everything is checked, we think that we are going to be able to work with certain industries which are dealing with this kind of big, big uh, solar plants. And once we have a, a cheap system, and then we are going to have also a cheap electricity. So our approach differ in the, because what are we bringing? So we are uh, having, and here we are going to have a mirrored cavity, which is going to have a, a, a property of reflecting the infrared, uh, which we didn't have before in all the system that we used. We have, sim uh, we have simulated this approach with the result that we may reach high efficiency at high temperature than previous possible. So we, well, the aim of all of this thing that we are doing with durable material, cheaper material, but we have in mind the high efficiency of our system, the performance efficiency of this system. So, uh, so far, that is what we have on the roof of uh, VITS. Because uh, Phil is already there, he knows now where the situation is. Uh, but that is uh, the situation. And some results has been tested. And so far, so good. Our, our concentrator is being uh, working uh, nicely. And uh, as I told you, the main uh, idea was the, cover, the receiver cavity. So what is, uh, what is the, why this uh, receiver cavity? As you can see on this figure, so this, the first one is showing you the vacuum, the vacuum uh, tube receiver. So here we have a glass cover, we have outside ambient temperature, here we have the, the only this is the glass cover which is covered uh, which is covering the the receiver tube so but between those two there is a vacuum so if the the radiation comes through uh, there are going to be some uh, rust in the this vacuum that we have as we don't have anything on the inside of this glass cover okay so that those are the system that we had before during my master's, I, we incorporated the pot mirror on the inside of the, this uh, uh, tube, uh, this uh, glass tube to minimize the loss. Now, uh, uh, also the, 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 the study card on, and we are now uh, improving the cavity receiver. So what do we have here, for example, this is one of uh, an example of the cavity receiver. So we have uh, the cavity and then we have the aperture here. And we can see we are tracking the solar ray and then they have to be, we, we are trying so that all the incoming solar radiation can pass through this aperture, okay? But when you reach inside, that it can have multiple reflection back and forth, but they are not going outside. So we are designing this system that it can have multiple reflection going forth and back, and then it comes back again on the, the receiver tube. Okay, so I'm going to show you what we have in the next one. So this is another kind of a, a, a cavity receiver. And here I was telling you about the difference between evacuated receiver unity and the cavity receiver. So you can see the difference. So, and the cavity receiver can minimize those loss that we can have when we have evacuated receiver. Okay, so how does it work? So uh, it's almost what I have said already. So it will reflect the solar from the parabolic uh, into the target and the target can be any type of receiver as I have explained in the previous slide. And uh, using uh, parabolic, uh, parabola rows, 
and then we can calculate a uh, or and also we can also know exactly how much solar flux has reached the the receiver and when you are also building this kind of uh, receiver or this kind of system you have to make uh, in mind and find out where is really our focal length okay so the parameter have been set we know uh, how long our our plant is going to be our prototype is going to be when we are also varying different type we are also working on different type of focal length because if we have a different rim angle it means that we are also going to have different focal length so we all those kind of parameter have been analyzed to see actually the optimum system that is go was built on uh, the roof so to check the performance as i said so what you do you is the rotation between the incident flux and uh, the the incoming uh, flux okay and if you have a high concentration you it means that you have uh, your system can uh, focus a lot of radiation efficiently so as I was saying, uh, there were some uh, previous findings. I forgot to put some reference, but before I submit this uh, PowerPoint, I'm going to put those references so that you can refer them to uh, when you are reading. So a mathematical expression of the heat transfer process of the material of cavity mirror, hot mirror, and other potential materials, uh, which involves all the geometries were delivered based on the conservation of energy law. So, and most of my master's degree was working, I was working on that kind of uh, derivation. And then comes uh, uh, Victor who established uh, the, assist, the system also using a hot mirror. And there are also other improvements that he did. And for current thesis, also there was another improvement, and that's when the, the cavity idea came true. And we are trying to improve current, uh, 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 current uh, system using now, because it was in uh, it was uh, in, inside the, the lab, his system. Now we are outside to see what is the solar radiation is going to be in bringing. So also some analytical model have been developed using heat transfer principles. Uh, those one also are in those three thesis. And a previous study showed that the hot mirror, that was my, my, my master's degree, it shows that the hot mirror receiver effectively reduce the infrared rose at high temperature and reduce the thermal stress on the grass cover and suggested we all, as I was telling you, we suggested that maybe the hybrid system can be the better one. So this is how the system was. So here I was, uh, this is when there's no, uh, there's no hot mirror. And here, that is when you, you put the hot mirror on the grass cover. As you can see, it reflects back this one. But if there is no uh, hot mirror, we are going to lose this infrared. So to reduce the loss, we have to put that one here. And this one was one of my results, because uh, uh, we were looking at the temperature uh, along the receiver length. As you can see, the receiver pipe, uh, when we have a, a selective coating here, uh, we have this. And when we have a grass cover with a selective coating, we have this situation here, okay? And here we have a hot mirror and a grass cover. And as you can see, the way the evolution or the curve shows that the receiver with a hot mirror and uh, with uh, the uh, for the hot mirrors, we, there is an improvement actually.
So, uh -huh. now on some ongoing cases, just giving you. So what we are doing, we are testing some cases at the moment. So what we do uh, in our simulation, we are looking at, uh, for example, I gave you this, I'm just giving you only uh, the, uh, the case when we have the four column at four different position, okay? So here we have our receiver a, a pipe, and here we have our glass cover with the, uh, which is insulated, and we have the aperture. So for F3 here, we are putting the glass cover with the hot mirror, uh, sorry, we are, we are, we are, that is where we are going to, to place the, the receiver, okay? And then we are going to check, uh, we are going to, to vary uh, the, the, what, how the, the, the flux is going to vary according to the position of this receiver unit. So meaning that you are, we are going to place the receiver unit on different position. So on F4, on F2, and on F1, and on F3 and then find out how, I, how those positions are going to affect the incoming solar radiation on the receiver, okay? So uh, this is going to be done because uh, uh, my, my part in this is to simulate the solar flux. So what I'm using uh, to trace uh, this, uh, uh, radiation, I'm using uh, a software called COMSO Multiphysics. This software has the capacity to do uh, most of the job because it has, it is already, uh, it has all the building function and the mathematical equation are already building and uh, some parameter of the materials are already inside. So what you have to do, you have to define your system in the right way. So once you define the system in the right way, and then you put all the parameter on the right track, so the, the rest is going to be easier. So what we do, the ray tracing, this is a ray tracing algorithm. It has different type of, uh, of uh, module inside it. And then uh, for these exercises, we were using uh, ray optic, uh, the optic geometry module to trace the incoming solar radiation from the sun. And we also include all the property of the sun. So this is uh, showing how the ray trace was done. And then also, uh, as you can see, there are some losses, okay? So uh, the system, uh, if you are seeing this, it means that there's something wrong. So we have to check uh, what we did. We have to check exactly if our parameter were, were defined and then so that what, because remember the aim of our study is to minimize all the losses. As you can see, they are reflected on the inside mirror and then some of them are going back and we have to avoid all those losses. So we have, what we are also doing, but I'm not going to present to you now, is also to try to reduce the distance between those two uh, cycles. So the annular size also can affect this situation. So we also did a lot of uh, uh, calculation on that. So our results actually are still in, uh, in uh, uh, we are still working on them and we're still discussing on them. So I can't, uh, I can't tell you that uh, they are already uh, genuine. So we still cause working on them. Uh, I'm just giving you an overview of what we are doing. So, but they are not like exact results yet. So this is one of the, 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 the flux distribution at different rim angle. And the, the blue one is, um, is when we have a, a limb angle 45 
and this it when we have a limb angle of 68 and this is the usual one that we always use uh, in the situation i think this when we have f if i go back here that is when the situation is on f uh, four okay when you plus this the, the receiver in the center of the your your system okay so so far that's what we have been done so this the the, the flag distribution uh, the use of this flux distribution is going to be the bound, uh, the boundary uh, 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 for the heat transfer. So I generate the distribution, the flux distribution, and then current is going to use this to, for the, the heat transfer to generate the, the, the temperature profile. So I didn't present some uh, uh, temperature profile for this. I just wanted to give you the overview of the system, why we are doing this, and the reason behind. And I think uh, you had an, a general idea now of what the system is doing. But if you have any question uh, about uh, like more things, I am ready to answer some question. And I know that Prof is also going to contribute on that. So now what is next? So we are going to do the testing on the solar collector that we have already on the, the roof, uh, comparing with our results. Then we are going to do the calculation of thermal efficiency. And we are going to also include the wind velocity, everything. Because remember, we are working outside. So there are going to be different uh, uh, influence on our calculation. So we have to incorporate all those parameters in our system. And then finally, we are going to do optimization and then get some data and then do evaluation. And hopefully, we are going to share with you our results soon. So I would like to, uh, sorry, there's uh, an error, to acknowledge my prof and the team member, Karet, my prof, uh, who's professor for you, uh, my PhD, UJ family, VIS, and MC family. Thank you so much for attention. I'm open for any question. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> Marie Chantal, thank you for this uh, presentation. Uh, it's very nice um, to hear your physics uh, research uh, aspects and also the engagement aspects, uh, both of which are very, very important. Um, and I hope that's an encouragement for uh, some of our older young physicists here that uh, they need to manage to incorporate the, those two aspects. Uh, so we have some questions uh, in the chat. Emmanuel, do you want to ask your questions? Um, Emmanuel, can you talk? Um, otherwise, uh, we should uh, just read uh, his question. So the first question uh, is uh, for cavity receiver, why should we take care of the ratio of aperture to absorber okay. area? Okay. Why should we, let me read it. Can I stop sharing or? Oh yeah, okay. you, yeah, you want to read the question? Yeah, you can yeah, yes. stop sharing and, 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 and see the chat. Yeah. The cavity receiver, why should we take care of the flash or a better to absorb the area? How could limit heat transfer effect optimization? of the receiver okay so uh uh he's asking uh, why should we take care of the erosion of aperture to the absorber area okay so uh, if i go back hmm, let me come back on my slides
maybe it's because I didn't put all the needed information on that part. Okay, let me do this, for example. Let's say here we have, as you can see, let's, this is an aperture, okay? So as you can see here, the incoming solar radiation, uh, or let's say here, we are trying to, to, to arrange the mirror, okay? And the receiver so that the incoming solar radiation which is reflected, all the incoming solar radiation has to pass through. For example, if this array on the edge is the last one, okay, is the one which has to be passing through this one. It means that all other array has to pass through this aperture, okay? So if we don't take care of this Russian, okay, it means that if, for example, we don't have the aperture or the aperture is the half one okay what is going to happen sometimes we are going to lose as you can see there are going to be a reflection here uh, on this one or maybe if it go it, it, it tap here and then it goes back we are going to lose it so it is good to take care of if we have a small aperture we are minimizing the loss but if we have a big aperture, we are increasing the loss. So, and uh, in our previous study, uh, or maybe in the coming, uh, uh, if we get luck, we are going to, we are going to find that we found that that a small aperture is more uh, advisable than a big aperture because it minimizes the loss. I don't know if you got it. Am I clear? Yeah, that is uh, that is very good. Um, but do you optimize as well uh, the absorber area, which is the other side of the question? The absorber area. Actually, we we I think we are using some standard uh, uh, tube which are already known. Uh, so what we do, we are we are we we are only optimizing the aperture, but the tube here stays unchanged. So only what we, as I told you, what we can optimize is the distance between the tube and the cover, mm -hmm. okay? But the, the, we are not going to change the, the size of the, 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 the tube. Maybe the, the, the glass cover can somehow, but I think we can, we are going to also to look if the way we reduce this one, are we increasing the area of the, the tube or we are increasing the area of the, the glass cover? So all those things are being taken care of. Very good, very good. So the other question about the convective uh, heat transfer, does it, does it affect uh, uh, your optimization somehow here? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what, uh, Maybe you understand the question in a different way. Okay, so first of all, uh, remember uh, when we, we, uh, we when we have a transfer of uh, uh, a heat transfer, we have convection, we have radiation, we have um, what the first ones. So those three type of uh, uh, com uh, like heat transfer. Okay, so. When we are constructing a, 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 this receiver, we have to take care of all these things to reduce the, the losses. They are all taken care of, actually. The convective, the radiation, that's, that was the reason why we put the hot mirror to reduce that radiation losses. So the convective were already taken care of because of this mm. vacuum inside. OK, very good. Um, other questions or other comments? Yes, Professor. Yes, Fabien, go ahead. Firstly, I would like to congratulate uh, Marie Chantal very well for the initiative about the work that she is doing in in her countries, in her country, because we don't see every day like woman who is fight for the young people in his country like that. We don't see uh, that with initiative like that. We don't see it. 
And after that, I have one question, one first question. What's the difference between the photovoltaic panel mm -hmm. and the receiver cavity? Okay. Okay, so as you know, the photovoltaic uh, panel, uh, we have two types of photo uh, photovoltaic uh, uh, system or solar cells. We have a crystalline uh, and we have a thin film. And those are the ones you always see in our roof, okay? On, yes. uh, so those are the photovoltaic. They, all, they change solar energy to electricity directly. That is how they work. But for this kind of a system, a, a concentrated solar power plant, uh, now is a solar thermal uh, energy system. Why thermal? Because we have the solar and then solar goes to, uh, it has uh, to be deposed on the tube uh, here, the tube which contain a fruit. A fruit can be water or can be a molten salt. So, this uh, fluid inside is going to, to get steamed and then it's going to, to change into thermal energy. Then later on, it's going to change uh, the steam into electricity. So it doesn't convert directly the solar energy into electricity like photovoltaics, but it, it has to pass through all those processes. Okay, uh, there is a hands raised by uh, Professor Ulrich Breller. Ulrich? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in fact very much my question, very much related to the last question. I mean, what type of systems do you in fact uh, envisage to change or to transfer the thermal energy into electricity? Because you started your talk with talking about the electricity uh, needs in Rwanda and uh, so if you say you have a system which collects, uh, which heats up this fluid, but mm -hmm. uh, you probably put some sort of uh, conventional turbine or so behind there, but what would be then the overall efficiency of the system? Or okay. what type of, of okay. PV and you have in okay. mind? Mm. So actually, if you look at the, the efficiency of uh, a system, Actually, the good thing about the concentrator is like they have this storage uh, capacity. If a concentrator solar power plant have a storage capacity, its efficiency is going to be beyond 75%, which is good. But if it doesn't have the storage capacity or system, the efficiency is between 20 and 40%. But remember for the photovoltaic system, it varies between 15 and 20. So the concentrated solar plant is more efficient than PV, but there is always a constraint, a constraint of the prices and the costs. Uh, that's why we are trying to see if we can get a cheap, uh, a, a cheap system to, to establish in African uh, uh, continent so that we can have access to cheap electricity. But what would be that uh, the system which translates the heat into electricity? What would that be? Or what is the heat system there? The system which. Yeah, so once you have heated the fluid, yeah, you have the fluid that's now heated. There are well, all the, the, the steam turbine. The yeah. steam turbine. There are oh. the steam turbine which are going to, to do the, the work. Okay, is mm -hmm. you have that complete system set up uh, at Vitz or, or not yet? That we are working on that. But please, but have... there, there are already established system in South Africa, and there are big ones. What we are, uh, what the, our contribution here, if uh, I'm clear enough, uh, our contribution is on the receiver unity. Okay, we need to improve. The, the materials that uh, are being used at the moment. We are also also uh, introducing this receiver cavity, but the whole system is going to work as the usual ones which are already in place. Okay. Mm. But please, yes. in the case, in the case uh, if, if it is raining, for example, I'm mm -hmm. saying that it is the, the tube, 
mm. which conduct which conduct the electricity. But in the case of the photovoltaic panel, it is the electrical wire wire which conduct the electricity. Is uh, uh, what's the inconvenient? The inconvenient is is it bit, is, is it more in the case of the cavity or photovoltaic? Actually, panel? the cavity only uh, the 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 role of the cavity here is to maximize the capture, okay? The yeah. capture of solar radiation, which is going to be on the solar uh, tube, uh, the, the receiver tube. Once we have a maximum uh, solar radiation captured on the tube, the rest is going to, to be done as usual. So the only, uh, the only improvement here is to try to maximize the Remember on the solar panel PV, they are rectangular, okay? Yes. So sometimes you have uh, you have to to change the the titering angle. You have to track the uh, the the solar. I mean, sometimes when the solar is not uh, perpendicular, you know all those kind of that you do. But still, there are some losses. Why? Because there is no uh, here. You can see there is some. We are trying to to minimize all the losses which can go. Outside, outside the system, okay. Yeah. So, in order to uh, to be absorbed by the tube, so once yeah. that that maximum uh, uh, solar radiation is absorbed by the tube, the fluid inside the tube is going to be heat up, okay. So yeah. once it's heat up, it's going to transfer that heat, and then it's going to transfer that heat where to the the steam turbine. Okay, then the steam turbine is going to turn that into electricity. But in this case, mm -hmm. for in the case in the case of the photovoltaic panel, panel they are rectangular. Mm -hmm. it, uh, in this case, the direction of the of the of the radiation is mm -hmm. isotrop is isotropic. Mm -hmm. But in the case of the cavity, it is anisotropic. Mm -hmm. Can we move? Can, can we rotate in the case if the like the like, like the sun is displaced yes. from yes. the morning to mm. the night? Mm. Can yes, we? They, mm. yes, yes, I, there is also a, a tracking system for this kind of system. Also, it helps so it has to track the, the incoming solar radiation. Very good, very good. Other questions? Um, Marie Chantal, so for, mm. for the case of Rwanda, right? So right now this um, study is being done in South Africa. You have uh, a unit that is uh, at VIX, uh, which you are doing all of these things. Um, how do you expect, um, you know, this, uh, the installation of a system like this in Rwanda, what would you expect to change? I mean, you have the environment that's probably different and you know what let's say you have a, a farm of these solar receiver panels and you want to place them in Rwanda what would you do okay actually when we established this uh, or when we started this project we were trying to see if the prototype works well at least maybe we can also do the same thing in in my country then so that we can have a system comparison with different atmosphere condition so uh, in the mind of uh, saying also that uh, if you look at our energy in Rwanda uh, sources, uh, when we come to solar energy, the source that we are using is a PV system and solar heaters. Maybe an introduction of uh, this kind of uh, concentrator, maybe it, it can be a good uh, source of energy once we have tested that one. Okay. Um, yeah. I think somebody has a comment. Yes, Prof. Uh, we, uh, 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 Fabian, let's see if uh, somebody else uh, has a comment. I, I know you, 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 you have a lot of questions, but anybody else wants to say something? All right, Fabian, uh, there is uh, a question from, uh, from, uh, uh, Paul uh, Sibomana. Paul, how are you doing? You want to ask the question yourself? I think he, I, he was asking the same question that Fabian asked. Can CSP 
be installed in tracking mode as well, like Fifi, and then I say yes. Okay, very good, very good. Um, so, um, yeah, Fabian, uh, no, Munia, you have a question? I see Munia's hands. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Mary, for this nice presentation. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to have met you in your beautiful uh, country, Rwanda. Yeah, we were in the same part, uh, yes, in 2016. My question is, uh, is what what is the most uh, user uh, friendly right trust and simulation software for uh, solar radiation modeling? I'm not sure if uh, Comsol is an open source or not. No, it's a commercial one actually. You have to buy it, and it's very expensive. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Welcome. Um. Another questions uh, now, uh, Fabian, go ahead. Uh, no, um, Al Malik, you have a question? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Santel, for the presentation. I understand that the introduction of the cavity receiver, mm -hmm. the purpose is to reduce um, ref um, losses by reflection. Mm -hmm. Yes. But now yeah. I'm considering an introduction of such a receiver cavity, wouldn't it increase the, uh, the losses through conduction? Or have you... Do you have you considered uh, methods of reducing such losses? Method of reducing the losses through conduction. Actually, all those things, uh, conduction, uh, convection, and radiation, uh, at the beginning, we have been taken care of. Okay. Uh, it's okay. like because I didn't want to put all the big equation because sometimes you get bored with the equations. Thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, Fabian, you want to ask your question now? Yes, Prof. In 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 the case that uh, this system is very cheap at this time for the ordinary people, can mm -hmm. we access this system? If the system has been approved or licensed. So. For example, you know the, the the PV system. People can uh, install some PV panel on, on their own roof and get some electricity that they add to mm. to the normal uh, um, electricity source. It's like you know, in addition, I if I understand Fabian's question, do you expect uh, you yes, know sure. that this system to be become like uh, a, a small unit that people can actually install uh, for their own houses or do, house. yeah or do you expect it to just be a huge farm that that produce uh, some contributed electricity for a region or, or a country so far what i have been i have been seeing all always the big farm actually mm -hmm. maybe we have to that is something that we have to think of if it is feasible because we have to check first i think our prototype is going to tell us more Okay. Very good. Um, so, Professor Ferrer, so before we, we end, uh, is there anything that you want to tell us here or any message you have for the young folks that are connected? Um, not really. I think Chantal did an excellent job of presenting our work and uh, I think she fielded the questions very well. I, I wanted to jump in once or twice, but then I felt that no, she's actually doing a very good job herself. So I let her do it. Um, I'm, I'm very impressed with the, with the enthusiasm and quality of questions here. And, uh, and um, I'm, I'm really glad that I, that I got invited to this presentation. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you, Prof. Um, thank you for the excellent job you are doing with, uh, with uh, Marie Chantal. She's one of our stars, and we are very proud of her. Uh, it, was, it was very easy because she's, you know, she made it easy for me. <laughs> Raymond, you want to ask, answer your, uh, ask your question? Yes, hello. Yes, Laman. Yeah, I just want to ask the relevance of the research that you did in South Africa in the context of uh, Rwanda. Mm. Yes, like how maybe will it contribute towards um, 
are reducing the gap within the accessibility of, uh, of renewable energy in Rwanda? Uh, I think I have uh, answered that question to Prof. Okay. Ketev, because he asked that. Uh, but because uh, as I was saying that everyone now is trying to move from uh, no renewable energy to uh, to renewable energy sources. So the situation is the same also in Rwanda. So uh, looking at the, the situation that I showed you, that we have already uh, 210 megawatts, which is in storage, and only five uh, point something is from solar energy. So maybe an introduction of such kind of system in the country can be a huge contribution to the, the gap that we are having in our energy uh, sources, because as you know, in Rwanda, the source of energy that we are using is uh, uh, from hydropower. And sometimes when we are in a dry season, we are facing a lot of road shedding and, you know, this different kind of uh, this uh, uh, problem. So I think once we have uh, this kind of uh, system, which can even store the energy, I think is going to be a huge contribution. It's a long plan project, but I think one can make it if the finance uh, uh, cost is covered. Uh, Dr. Herman, Herman White is also here. Uh, you want to say something, Herman? Are you, I, I see that you have a question on the chat. Well, thanks very much, Katevi. I, I believe my question was answered. I, I, I have a new niece from Rwanda, and we went to visit her and her family in, uh, in 2019 in the area of uh, Kanyundo, and uh, oh. we placed one solar panel on her new home. Yeah. Uh, so it provides some electricity. It's very far out. It took a long time to get there. So that's, that's, that's what generated my question about whether in fact these solar panels would be uh, of value or used or available to people who are in uh, the outside areas uh, beyond Kigali uh, and other uh, cities. But uh, your presentation was just outstanding. It was very, very good. I really appreciate it. And, and uh, it gives me a, a certain connection with the fact that I've been in that country and visit family in that country. So it, it's, uh, you're doing a great job and congratulations on your degree and the work that you've done is is very is fantastic. We're just overwhelmed with it. Thanks. Thank you. Great. Um, thank you very much. So I think on that note uh, we should uh, um, stop now. And the people who uh, want to take a picture, they can uh, they can turn on the videos. Um, and uh, uh, Munia will take uh, the picture. Um, so uh, Munia, are you there? Um, I don't hear Munia and I don't see her camera on. Okay. Well, let's see. I, you know, I will try. Um, I think everybody is. Uh... Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to take another one. Um, all right. So, Marie Chantal, please uh, send me your slides uh, to be uploaded to the agenda page. Um, what you are saying? Yeah, send me your slides to be uploaded to the agenda page. Um, and also we have the recording of the session, which we will also upload to the agenda, in addition to uh, the screenshot that, uh, that we just took. Um, and now, Marie Chantal, I have another, another task for you. So I didn't want to ask you before, because I know you were preparing this presentation. So now you should talk to your co-conveners of the African strategy so that you guys can uh, think about when you want to organize your, uh, your first uh, meeting of uh, women in science. Okay, uh, that, will be, that, will be, that will be appreciated. All right. Yeah. Okay, so um, 
I suggest that we, uh, we stop now. I'd like to thank uh, everybody for their participation. And Marie Chantal, thank you for all that you are doing and really wishing you the best going forward. It's really fantastic to see. Thank you so much for thank everything. You. And I thank everyone. All right. OK. Bye, everyone. Bye. Long. Thanks for the connection, Kakebe. Yeah, uh, thank you. Oh, that's uh, that's Professor Ferret. Uh, nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. Uh, thank you. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Prof.